Welcome back. In this video, we're going to finish off what we did by making weapon pickups. So we made some pickups in the last video, but we didn't make weapon pickups because they're going to be a little bit more complicated. And so I decided to just dedicate this video to doing that. Um, so what we're going to do is open up the character and you can see I've called this current pickup, but more specifically, we should actually call it current weapon pickup because that's kind of what it is. It's not really, we're never going to be storing a normal pickup. We're only going to be storing weapon pickups. Um, we don't need to store normal pickups because as soon as you walk into them, you take them. But the weapon pickups we do need to store because when you walk um, over them, we'll store it and then you can press E to either take it or not take it. So they're a little bit different and we're going to handle it that way. Um, and also I'm going to change this replication to replicate it instead of rep notify. We don't need to do any special response and um, I'm going to select under the replication condition. So this is just a this is a nice optimization technique. Now um, we could tell everyone else what our current pickup is, but it's not really needed. Um, so we can just replicate that just to the owner, right? That just means just replicate it to ourselves. And you might be wondering, well, I thought the whole point of replication is so that other people can see what it is. Well, it is that, but it's also so that the player can't cheat. If we replicate a variable, it means that the server manages that variable. So even though only we will know this value, the server's still managing it, so that we won't be able to cheat and um, assign weapon pickups to ourselves and try to cheat the system. The server will still manage all of that. Um, so that's why we're just setting owner only. Because not everyone else in the game needs to know about it, just the owner. And if we were to go with none, it would tell everyone else about it, and that would use up more network um, usage in our game, and that would make it slower. So theoretically, we're just making it a little bit faster. So that's how replication conditions work. Um, now, let's think about how we're going to do this. Um, so we'll start off in the pickup weapon class. So if we go to blueprints, pickups, and open up the weapon pickup. Um, we need to implement a little bit of functionality. It's pretty simple though. There's not really that much to do. I was kind of, I don't know, I think I was exaggerating a little bit when I said it was really difficult. It's not too bad. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to say that um, on the pickup sphere being entered, take the player and set their current weapon pickup to this pickup. And you can, you can get this pickup by doing self. So drag out from here and type self to fill that in. Or you can do self and then connect it up. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say when you leave the pickup sphere, so pickup sphere left. Now I'm calling it, that's the wrong one. We did that last time, same mistake. Um, if we do pickup sphere left, we want this one at the top. Now, um, what we're going to say is if the current weapon pickup is equal to this weapon pickup, so if we're leaving this pickup, then set the player's current pickup to nothing. And to set it to nothing, we just don't plug anything into the um, current weapon pickup node. So we're basically setting it to null. We're telling the player that they no longer have a weapon. And that should mostly be it. We're going to implement some variables as well, because there are some variables. And I'll explain why some of these things need to be the way they are. Um, the first thing is pretty obvious. It's what weapon is this weapon pickup going to give to the player. So weapon to give, we'll call it. And uh, this needs to be a weapon, BP weapon, and instead of, if we select object, that's talking about a weapon that exists within the level. But we want to refer to one of our weapon pickups, so we need to select class reference instead. Um, so that should be, that should be all we need to do for that one. We also need to set the amount of ammo that this weapon has stored in it. So I want to explain this really quickly. Um, if you have a gun and then you drop it on the floor, we what we're going to do is we're going to delete your gun 
and replace it with a pickup, a weapon pickup for that gun and put it on the floor. One issue though is that it's going to forget how much ammo was in the gun because it's going to destroy the gun and in doing so it will, it will forget how much ammo was in the gun if we ever pick it back up. So we need to store the amount of ammo that was actually in the gun before we dropped it inside of this pickup. So a little bit confusing but it will, it'll make sense as we implement it. So, um, and yeah, we'll also, um, just so that we can, hmm, yeah, just so that we can edit this, um, if you turn on instance editable, this will allow us to do some, um, editing stuff later on, which I'll, I'll explain as well. Uh, and then we're going to add some variables for the ammo. So current ammo and clip needs to be an integer. And it needs to be replicated, because everyone needs to know, because if someone else picked up this weapon, they'd need to know how much ammo was in it. So it needs to be replicated to everyone. And we're going to duplicate this again, and we're going to say current spare ammo. Cool. And, um, and the last thing we need to know is, was this weapon dropped by another player? So dropped by player. And this is going to be a boolean value, a true or false value. Um, and then, yeah, so dropped by player is going to be true if a player dropped it, or it's going to be false if it's spawned into the level and no one has dropped it or anything like that. Um, and we're going to use this to set the ammo later on. Because if a, if, if a player didn't drop it, if it just spawned in the level, uh, we don't need to do any ammo stuff. Okay, so... Um, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, on begin play, we're going to need to set the ammo if a player dropped it. So we'll do that really quickly. It's quite easy. Begin play. We're only going to do this on the server. We're going to say that if a player did not drop this, so, so um, we're going to do not. So that'll take whatever this value is and just invert it. So if this is true, make it false. If it's false, make it true. So that's what this not node does. We want to check if the player did not drop it. So um, we'll go ahead and use a branch. Plug it in there. And so if the player did not drop it, we're going to set the current ammo in clip and the current spare ammo to be the amount that comes in the weapon by default. So um, to figure out the default values for the weapon, we can drag and drop this in, drag off and type in default, and there's this node called get class default, and that will allow us to see the default amounts for this weapon, all the default variables, how much damage it does, the name, and other stuff like that. And we want to set the uh, current ammo to that one there and we want to set the current spare ammo to that one there cool so that'll just make sure that the ammo is remembered if someone was to drop the gun and let's just do some comments remember ammo amounts if player dropped weapon um, set player pickup unset player pickup okay so um reasonably reasonably simple stuff going on here nothing nothing super complicated uh the the more complicated part is going to be dropping your weapon so if you already have a weapon and you try to take one we need to drop your current weapon on the ground uh, so let's go ahead and think about how we're going to do that so um i'll make this an event we're going to right click and make a custom event called drop current weapon and we're only going to do it on the server the server is going to handle dropping of weapons because it's pretty gameplay important um, so we're going to take the player's weapon and just going off what weapon the player has how do we know what pickup to spawn well actually we don't know what pickup to spawn because that's not stored inside of the weapon so that's something we need to do if we go into the weapons, BP underscore weapon, our weapon master class, um, we're going to need to set the uh, pickup. So we'll go into add variable 
and we're going to add a variable called weapon pickup and type weapon pickup in here. Make sure that you select weapon pickup class. And now on each weapon, we need to select the pickup for that weapon. The only problem is we don't actually have pickups for any of the weapons in our game yet. So we need to sort all of those out. We'll right click on the BP weapon pickup and make a child. We're going to call this BP underscore um, scoped rifle underscore pickup. And we'll hit control W to duplicate that. And we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to make another one for the assault rifle pickup. Okay. So we're going to save those and open them up. And, um, and in each of them, so we've got the scoped rifle here and we've got the assault rifle here. Each of them will now have this option called weapon to give. Go ahead and click the drop down there and make sure that you select scoped rifle for the scoped rifle pickup. And for the assault rifle pickup, make sure that you select assault rifle. That's the weapon that we're going to be giving to the player. These values like current ammo, current spare ammo and dropped by player do not modify these. We just want to modify the weapon to give value. And now if we go into the weapons, scoped rifle and assault rifle, you'll notice these have this option weapon pickup. So for the assault rifle, click the drop down, click assault rifle pickup. And for the scoped rifle, click the drop down and then click scoped rifle pickup. And now we know when we drop our weapon, what pickup class to actually spawn. Make sure that you type these correctly, because if, for example, you had the scoped rifle and you'd selected something wrong, when you drop the scoped rifle on the ground, it's going to drop the assault rifle instead. So make sure that you get all the values correctly um, as I entered them in. Okay, so coming back into our character, we can now drop the weapon on the ground. If we drag out, we can get the pickup for the weapon that we're holding by typing get pickup and getting the weapon pickup. We'll also need to know how much ammo is in our uh, weapon, so we can drag out and get the current ammo. And drag out and get the current spare ammo. And we now, we now need to spawn the um, pickup for the gun that we're holding. And under class, we can plug in the weapon pickup. So we're going to spawn the pickup for whatever um, weapon we're holding. And we are going to set some values here. Now, we want to set the amount of ammo and stuff like that in the gun, but there's no, really, there's no real place to do that. So what we're going to do is go back to the weapon pickup and click on current ammo and clip and click the expose on spawn value and uh, also make sure that it's marked as instance editable and do the same thing for the current spare ammo so check instance editable and check expose on spawn and also we're going to do the same for dropped by player as well and what that'll do is if we come back into here you can see there's now some values here that we can set um, I'm just gonna try this again let's just drag out spawn actor Plug that in, and now there's some values here. We're going to check the box that says dropped by player because this weapon was dropped by the player. And um, we're going to connect the current ammo and clip and the current spare ammo up like that. And we don't really need to worry about anything else. One thing though is we need to know where to drop the weapon. And we're going to make a function that will drop the weapon for us because um, it's a little bit complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new function, click add function. And you remember I said functions are just events, but they return a value. Uh, so the value we're going to return is where to spawn the pickup. So I'm just going to call this get pickup spawn transform. So this is where we're going to spawn the pickup basically. And we need to output a transform. A transform um, is a location, a rotation, and a scale. And we need all of that information when we spawn the pickup into the world. And we'll just give it a name, we'll call it transform. Okay, so um, with that done, what we can do is we're going to get the controller. 
and we're going to use the same node that we used before. It's called get actor eyes viewpoint. To find out where our player is looking, we can just get the forward vector of our player's look rotation and then multiply that by some value. So I'm going to drop the weapon 200 units in front of the player. So I need to multiply the forward vector by 200 and then add that to wherever my player's eyes are actually located. Like that. And then finally we can just plug this right in and actually let's let's make a transform. So drag out and type make transform. We are only going to use the location though. It doesn't really matter what the rotation is. I'm just going to set the rotation to be zero. And the scale is obviously going to be one. We just want our pickups to be normal sized. So um, let's have a look at this. Ah, okay. So now we're going to uh, right click and get pickup spawn transform. Now we could do this. We could plug it in like this and then do that. And there'd be nothing wrong with that. But we don't actually need to do that. What we can instead do is click on get pickup spawn transform. Check this box that says pure. And now it looks a lot tidier. What we can do is hold control, drag this in. And you can see it doesn't have a white pin anymore because we really don't need one. There's no reason to have it there. So it, it just makes it a bit cleaner. So um, I think that looks okay to me. Nothing terribly off about that. Um, let's see. Right, so now that we've spawned the weapon pickup in, we want to get rid of our player's weapon. And to do that, we need to drag the weapon in, hold control and drop the weapon, and then just type destroy actor. So this is going to destroy our weapon. It's going to remove it from the game. And then hold alt and drag the weapon in, and we're going to set the weapon to nothing. Because since our weapon has been dropped, we no longer have a weapon on our uh, character. Awesome. So um, this is going to be really useful. Inside of the give weapon now, we want to sort of modify it. So if I give my player a weapon and I've already got a weapon, it's going to drop your current weapon on the ground first and then give them the weapon. Um, so one thing I also did before is I was doing um, weapon giving. I wasn't doing it on the server. That's a big mistake. Needs to be on the server. And, uh, okay, so if we have a weapon, so drag weapon in, type is valid. So if we don't have a weapon, we can just do the same thing that we were doing before. But if you already have a weapon and we try to give the player a weapon, we want to dispose of the weapon they have right now before we give them a weapon. And we can now do that because we just made an event that does that for us, remember? The uh, drop current weapon event. So if we go back up to where we're giving the weapon and just do drop current weapon. And then plug that in. So essentially what we're doing here is we're saying, check if the player has a weapon. If they do have a weapon, drop it first and then spawn in the new weapon. Or if they don't have a weapon, we can just spawn the weapon and give it to them straight away. So that's just going to be a lot tidier and it's going to save us from having bugs where you can equip multiple weapons at one time and uh, things of that nature. So the final piece of the puzzle is when we take a weapon pickup, how do we give a weapon to the player? Well, that's very simple. We've made an event that executes on the server that's going to do that for us. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and drag in our current pickup. And we're first of all going to make sure we're standing near a weapon pickup. So to make sure we have a weapon pickup in front of us, we're going to check that the current weapon pickup is valid. And, um, and if it is valid, we're going to give them the weapon. So drag out and give weapon. We need to type in the weapon to give to the player. Um, so we'll drag out from the pickup and get weapon to give. And you can plug that right in there. The last thing is, we need to dispose of the weapon uh, pickup after we've picked up the weapon. And to do that, you should know by now, is just destroy actor. So we use destroy actor to remove the weapon pickup from the world. 
And yeah, again, I'm totally forgetting to comment all this stuff. Uh, drop weapon if we have one. And take weapon on server and replicate back to clients. And then take weapon input. Cool. And yeah, that's pretty much all nicely commented. And there we go. Now we won't be able to see our weapon pickups in game because if you open them up you'll see that the pickup mesh has not been set to anything. Unfortunately the pack we downloaded doesn't have static meshes of the weapons, it just has skeletal meshes, but this really isn't too big of a problem. If we go into the weapons assets, uh, let's find prototype whip it's called. So you can see we have the prototype assault rifle and we want to make a static mesh out of it. So to create a static mesh, let's open it up. And uh, here we go, there's a big button that says make static mesh. So go ahead and just click on make static mesh. We'll just put it inside of prototype whip. And what we want to call it, we'll just call it SM underscore assault rifle. And then click OK. And what that's going to do is it's just going to make a static mesh out of the assault rifle because right now we have a skeletal mesh and that will not work for our pickup um, and then we need to do the exact same thing for the sniper rifle just go ahead and open that up and click on uh, make static mesh and then the exact same thing we're just going to call this sm underscore sniper rifle or I, I actually called mine scoped rifle so let's let's use that name instead scoped rifle and, uh, and at this point, if you go back into the assault rifle, under the pickup mesh, if we type in assault, there it is. So now we can select it because it's now a uh, static mesh. Because we're using a static mesh component and that expects a static mesh, not a skeletal mesh. Uh, so same thing for the scoped rifle. If I type in scoped, you can see the scoped rifle will now come up. And cool. And if we actually take these and drop them into the level, they should be appearing. So let's go to pickups. Cool, and they appear in the level. Okay guys, so check this out. We're going to take our scoped rifle pickup and drop it into the level. And we're going to take our assault rifle pickup and drop that into the level as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit play. And check this out. If I go ahead and take one of the pickups... You can see I can totally swap out my weapons and other players also see what's happening in the game as well, which is really important. When you're making a networked game, oftentimes um, stuff won't replicate properly, but it looks like other players can totally see what I'm doing here and it drops the weapons nicely. So there you go. There is weapon pickups. We've added them to the game. How awesome. At this point, I think our game needs a little bit of UI in it because we really need to see how much ammo we have left in our gun and it would be nice to see how many players are left alive in the game and stuff like that. So in the next video, we're going to be adding a user interface to our game so players can sort of see what's going on and have a better idea and get more information while they play. So anyways, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. See ya.